It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. Or we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Day 22, Internal Reporting and Triaging of Claims. The call, the email, the tip comes into your office. An employee reports suspicious activity somewhere across the globe. That activity might well run into an FCPA issue for a company. As the CCO, it will be up to you to begin the process, which will determine in many instances how the company will respond going forward. This scenario was driven home in the WPP FCPA enforcement action in 2021. Here, a whistleblower reported internally on allegations of bribery and corruption in the company's India subsidiary. WPP turned over the investigation to an inexperienced accounting firm in India and allowed the investigation to be controlled by the business unit manager, which was engaging in the bribery and corruption. The result, unsurprisingly, was no adverse findings. However, the whistleblower did not stop there and reported six more times for a total of seven internal reports, all with an increasing amount of documentary support. Finally, the company took the allegation seriously and commissioned an internal investigation. In the 2020 FCPA Resource Guide, it made clear with a concise statement about hotlines. It stated, An effective compliance program should include a mechanism for an organization's employees and others to report suspected or actual misconduct or violations of the company's policies on a confidential basis without fear of retaliation. The evaluation reinforced this language with the following found under Reporting and Investigations. Quote, How has the company collected, analyzed, and used information from its reporting mechanisms? How has the company assessed the seriousness of its allegations that it received? Has the compliance function had full access to reporting and investigative information? This is more than simply maintaining hotlines. Companies have to make a real effort to listen to employees. You need to have managers who are trained on how to handle employee concerns. They must be incentivized to take on this compliance responsibility, and you must devote communications resources to reinforcing your company's culture and values to create an environment and expectation that managers will raise employee concerns. The reason that a business's own employees are a company's best source of information about what is going on in a company. It is certainly a best practice for a company to listen to its own employees, particularly to help improve its processes and procedures. But more than listening to its employees, a company should provide a safe and secure route for employees to escalate their concerns. This is the underlying rationale behind the anonymous reporting system within any organization. Both the U.S. Sentencing Guidelines and the OECD Good Practices list as one of their components of an anonymous reporting mechanism by which employees can report compliance and ethics violations. Of course, Dodd-Frank whistleblower provisions also give heed to the implementation of a hotline. What are some of the best practices for a hotline? Start with the following. Availability. Your reporting mechanism can easily be assessed by your entire employee base, This may require more than one tool, such as a telephone report, internet reporting, or other mechanisms. Two, anonymity. There must be a manner to make reports anonymously if the reporter so desires. Three, escalation. You must have a protocol or mechanism to take up any reports up the chain if they warrant being heightened within your organization. Four, follow-up. There must be a sufficient follow-up protocol to make sure any reported events receive the warranted action. There should be a way to keep the incident reporter informed as to the progress of the matter within the organization protocol. And five, oversight. There should be multiple levels of review within your organization on which staffs, which reports come in to your organization. This includes senior compliance department staff, senior company management, up to the board of directors. Next, triaging of claims. Given the number of ways that information about violations or potential violations can be communicated to government regulators, having a robust triage system is an important way your company can determine what resources to bring to bear on a compliance problem. 
Jonathan Marks has articulated a five-stage process which allows for not only an early assessment of any allegations, but also a manner to think through your investigative report, or approach rather. Marks cautions you must have an experienced investigator or other seasoned professional making these determinations, if not a more well-rounded group or committee. Next, consider what types of evidence to review going forward. Finally, before selecting a triage solution, understand what tools are available, including both forensic and human, to complete the investigative process. Marks' five-stage process for early assessments includes stage one, This consists of allegations that have a low threat level and do not suggest a breakdown of internal controls. Tips that grouped into this stage do not have a financial or reputational impact. Stage two, these allegations are more serious in nature and often include some deficiency in the design of internal controls. Examples include business rule violations. Stage three, these allegations are serious in nature and generally involve an override of internal controls and thus are at a minimum of a serious deficiency, but they only have a minimal impact on the financial statements or your company's reputation. More serious allegations in this category include fraud, embezzlement, and bribery involving low-level and mid-level employees. Stage four, these are serious allegations that could have an impact on the completeness and accuracy of your audited financial statements, and that could indicate a material weakness in internal controls. They do not, however, appear to involve any member of the senior management team. Stage five, these are serious allegations that involve one or more members of the senior management team and are serious enough to damage a company's reputation. The receipt of allegations in this stage usually places a company in management crisis and could easy, easily result in a audited, or restatement rather, of an audited financial statement. We're going to have a quick word from our sponsor and then we'll be right back with today's three key takeaways. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, the Department of Justice and Securities and Exchange Commission put special emphasis on internal reporting lines. Number two, test your hotline on a regular basis to make sure it's working. Number three, every claim should be triaged before starting an investigation. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for day 23 on 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program where we take up monitoring and improvement of internal controls. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. I hope you will join me for the entire month of January where I take a look at some of the significant changes in compliance and FCPA enforcement. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.